things. So, bit of agile overview. So, what is agile? Is it for dummy? Is it as you got a silver bullet which will fix your problem? And there's a five easy way, uh, easy steps which you can learn agile and implement. I think you're wrong. It's Agility is the ability to both create and respond to change in order to profit uh, in a turbulent environment. Uh, and agility is the ability to balance flexibility and stability. Uh, so that's what I uh, call it uh, achieving agility while maintaining stability. Uh, so like Jim has said there, this here. So what, what exactly is an agile? I think first thing is a very simplistic format is an alternative method of delivering projects uh, or product. Uh, secondly, here, a uh, team along with the business come together and collaboratively and work together to build a product and a product it was iteratively. And thirdly, is a time box uh, between two to four weeks kind of a cycle and within that we have a prioritized list of uh, features of the product and uh, during those two to four weeks we deliver some increment and which can be shipped outside. So in a very simple format of Agile. Okay, so let's talk a bit more in detail about Agile. It's, it's an uh, iterative team-based approach to product development as I mentioned before. Uh, emphasis on the rapidly uh, rapid delivery of completed funct functionality or feature. Uh, it is time box and very, very focused because you prioritize and you have a uh, two to four week cycle to deliver uh, your uh, project. Uh, the deliverables are prioritized by business value. So uh, there's no, I feel this should be done first. It's basically product owner is responsible for prioritizing those things and uh, we totally focus on business. Uh, and part of this thing is uh, the product is incremental product is reviewed regularly and uh, the product increment is evaluated. So this allows you to go back and if you want to make changes to your product or if you want to improve something then can be done. Uh, and that's what uh, Agile methodology allows you to do that. Uh, the only thing uh, the different from any uh, traditional uh, background is Agile needs a high level of customer involvement. Uh, customers involved throughout the uh, life cycle of uh, this project. Okay, so moving on to next. So why bother using? Your current uh, methodology is working you're happy with that and you're still delivering product, you're still maintaining the market uh, position, uh, why should you change? I think there's a valid reason. One thing you all need to understand is change. Change is one thing is which is constant. Which, so change is inevitable, but progress is your choice. Uh, very simple example of keep giving example of Kodak. Kodak didn't change their process. Kodak were once upon a time, they were uh, largest uh, photographic company and then suddenly this company disappeared because they did not adopt to change and so it's very really important that uh, you should choose to actually uh, progress further and make changes. So you may not control uh, changes which is outside your control. Uh, it could be legislative change, or it could be a separation from uh, one country to another country like a Brexit is one example. Uh, similarly, there's a policy change happens or market scenario changes or new competitor comes in. So these are the changes which you can't control, but you definitely can choose to respond to those changes quickly. And as the responsiveness becomes more important, adding agility to business is essential. So irrespective whether you are in a manufacturing business or software business or service industry, it can be anyone. So any industry needs, every industry needs agility so that you can respond to those changes very quickly. So in a very simple diagram, I'm showing since the market is very volatile, and if you remove the agility from the, uh, the current situation, all you achieve is a fragility. So you're, you become so fragile that you cannot compete against your competitors. So it's very, very important to have the agility so that you can respond to those changes immediately. So I'll compare. So, we were talking about traditional project management, 
traditional way of delivery, traditional method of framework you've been using and why we should use it. So there's something, uh, I'm just using a report from 2015, uh, QS reports, uh, it is run by Standish. And uh, it shows traditional uh, project, there are 60% project canceled, nearly 30% projects failed and successful projects are only 11%. And in case of Agile, cancel are pretty much same. 52 percent, uh, the success rate suddenly goes up to 39 percent and fail on 9 percent. So that shows the failures are three times less and the success three times higher. So that is the reason why we should go for Agile because this allows you to change, allows you to respond to your changes happening uh, and uh, it's much more actually uh, where the product evolves and then you can change your direction anytime. So what are the benefits of Agile. First thing is risk management is inbuilt. Very clearly you can see what's going wrong because uh, in Agile we feel that we fail early and we learn early and that is the uh, basic concept behind all Agile methodology. So that is a risk management is inbuilt because we uh, handle all the risky items first and then we fix that thing. If we need to change direction we change, if we need to accept that risk. So we do not postpone those risks as uh, we do in normal uh, pro traditional project management. Uh, obviously this is increasing team participation because uh, team, we try and have the teams co-located and the business co-located so there's a team participation is very high. Um, and there's a trust due to transparency. No one hides behind those rag statuses, uh, red, amber, green. Uh, in, information is transmitted openly and it's transparent so businesses actively involved, they are aware of whether we are delayed or we are in on time or how much we are spending or not spending, all those things. Or day-to-day -day problems uh, the team is facing. So the transparency uh, is high. Um, next thing, fast feedback. Since you are working very closely with the business, the customer feedback is quickly, uh, you receive the quick uh, feedback. At the same time, you can respond to this uh, feedback immediately. And because of this feedback and constant changes, the poor quality is better uh, than anything else because the, you're getting constant feedback. And if the product quality is better, you have a happy customer. So these are the benefits of uh, Agile and uh, that's the reason we uh, advocate that we must use Agile in most of the, uh, most of the organization and most of the situation. So you must be asked, wondering, where should we use this Agile? Okay. So there's a scenario where rapidly changing market and technology situation, uh, you know, very simple example of uh, iPhone changing uh, new features, Samsung competing and then changing new features, introducing new feature. Again, iPhone is trying to catch up with. It. So if you have a very hyper competitive market where the technology is changing and market is changing, that is where you can use it, right? If you need to shrink time to market of product, again, this is because of competitor. Uh, very simple example of if, if there's a, um, a NOx limit uh, set by EU and they said okay it has to be lower than the previous uh, limit and you had to quickly come up with a product uh, which satisfies that NOx limit which is a carbon monoxide uh, emission. You have to be very quick to come up with this new product and uh, introduce that new product by a deadline given by uh, regulating, uh, regulatory authorities. Uh, increase innovation from customer end. Uh, at this situation, then you need to be very agile and uh, quickly in the market. If you need of, a, if there is a need of incremental development with the feedback, uh, you're not sure what product you're going to deliver, but you need a quicker feedback from uh, this uh, customer end user. Then this is the method you can use. Also, when you want to reduce the tes uh, testing or experimentation cost, because again, uh, testing and experimentation takes time. And by the time you release your product in market, uh, your competitor is already there. And if there's, that is a situation, Agile is the way to go. Uh, where the delivery of customer value at the point of sale. Uh, so usually when we do traditional project planning, uh, we have the values shown during the planning point, whereas they have not seen the product. Agile believes in delivering something and then that is where the customer values at the point of sale. So when it actually start making money and that is where the value is. And uh, if you need an adoptive method rather than a predictive method, then Agile is the way, uh, way to go. 
So moving on to the next one. Uh, as I mentioned that we'll be discussing few uh, case studies. Uh, so I'll talk about few case studies and then we'll go to the main case study where we talk about uh, our uh, current customer, uh, Bosch, and we have few attendees from Bosch as well here. Uh, so many thanks for joining and giving this such an opportunity to uh, do a jag with you. Uh, so let's take some example of uh, these two aircrafts. Any enthusiast here uh, love fighter aircrafts? I'm assuming everyone likes fighter aircrafts. So these are two fighter aircrafts, and I'll give you a bit of introduction about them. So F, this is the first one is your F-35 Joint, uh, joint Strike Fighter, and the second one is a JAS 39E. Uh, okay. So you'll be surprised that these fi uh, fighter plane for uh, manufacturing this fighter, developing and manufacturing this fighter planes, uh, we've used agile methodology. So the first F-35 was done by US uh, and uh, the current status is, is overrun, over budget because we've been using traditional methodology. The whole program cost is uh, 1.5 trillion US dollars. And the unit cost of each aircraft is ranging from 98 to 116 million uh, for uh, this is the latest version F-35AC, uh, which is nearly 100 million size uh, kind of for each aircraft. The top speed it achieves is Mach 1.6. Now, is a Swedish-based uh, aircraft company who's making a Jazz 39E, uh, and they have they're using agile methodology. And the new version of this aircraft now, obviously, 39E means there are A, B, C, D, and E. So five versions have been released now, uh, and new version released frequently. So they have modification and they release it to market. Uh, the program cost is. 13.5 billion, much less than what the um, F-35 spent already. And the unit cost for this aircraft is between 30 to 60, depending on what arms and what um, payloads they're carrying. Uh, and this is, we're talking about just based on just 39C uh, model. We, I do not have costing for uh, 39E at this minute. Uh, it reaches to Mach 2.0, much faster than um, top speed. And you'll be surprised that the F-35 still doesn't have any arms or any any payload. Uh, so still we are still in testing stage. Whereas uh, JAS-39E is full-fledged proper aircraft which can carry payload, which can carry arms and all those things. And they've been using Agile methodology. So it's a massive success, a massive demonstration of how Agile can be used. And uh, if you want, you can go to the websites, uh, which is there, uh, www.f35.com to see how the, how much is cost and all those things. And at the same time, you can look at the aviationweek.com uh, about the JAS 39E. Uh, it's an interesting story, actually. Next thing I was talking about, I wanted to present a case about Tesla. Uh, Tesla is very secretive uh, and they're not giving away the information very clearly, but obviously Tesla is using loads of agile. So I thought I came up with the one Volvo is using, uh, which is called SPA. Uh, it's a scalable product architecture. And so they're doing a modular um, manufacturing, modular uh, design. Uh, and uh, it was announced in 2014, so they've been using that. They have taken iterative approach to agile methodology to encourage modular approach. And I, as you can see from the diagram, there are loads of flexible and there's loads of fixed uh, 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 component of this uh, car and uh, based on fixed and flexible uh, they just change the model and change the uh, variation of those cars uh, so this is this is something about Volvo so with those two examples I'd like to discuss a case study about uh, well-known company Bosch as a few of you know that Bosch is a German based company and we have a, a huge presence uh, of Bosch in uh, United Kingdom as well and um, if you are in Midlands, uh, Wooster is um, known to everyone. We have a Wooster Bosch, uh, uh, the largest boiler producer uh, in the UK. And uh, I had, I was fortunate enough to work with uh, them to tra transform their team into a agile team. And, um, and they are willing to experiment with their uh, manufacturing and implementing agile there. So let's talk about that thing. Uh, by the way, this is uh, a book 
exploded view of a uh, old boiler. Uh, I cannot disclose the current boiler because of the confidentiality of the new design. This is an old boiler. Uh, and I just wanted to demonstrate you know, how the exploded view will look like, how if you go for a modular approach. Um, so the primary goal for this Bosch was, this is I'm talking about two years ago when we started, uh, is to implement an agile process framework to support the new model change, model design. So they wanted to move away. Uh, from the product-based design to a model designing. That was the key objective. Uh, had a many internal customers and multiple stakeholders. Uh, so if you're producing one particular component, one particular uh, module, then the, that module will be used by other, um, other uh, variant of the boilers. Uh, as you can see, it's a very complex manufacturing process where the modules will be pulled from various sources to assemble an appliance. Uh, so it's not just a boost to Bosch producing one particular module. Modules were produced in various other factories and uh, across UK and EU, and then pulled together to assemble one particular uh, model of the boiler. So it was a very complex manufacturing process. Um, also, they have a traditional um, and it's a proven one uh, TTM process framework, which is about the project management framework, uh, time to market. It's proven, and they've been using this. Uh, so, uh, really, which was traditional, and they wanted to kind of make a lightweight uh, approach to a product development. And the challenge was the model design needed to be ready by mid 2016, and this whole project was supposed to be finished in the first quarter of 2017. We'll talk about that uh, a bit later. So, the key objective when we started with this uh, scenario and uh, we were engaged in the initially and they wanted to implement something. So we can ask that, okay. First thing is adoption and implementation of Scrum. Second thing, we wanted to tailor this approach, uh, the tailor this uh, Scrum training. And uh, we wanted to optimize the Scrum practices to suit to uh, Bosch's uh, environment because we already, the teams were following TTM, which is time to market um, framework. And we wanted to optimize this uh, Scrum practice so that it fits with the current culture, current way of delivery, and uh, with the least resistance. And uh, also needed some kind of an intensive coaching on site so that uh, hand holding is there and then we achieving what we want to achieve on time. So obviously, if you this is as a new industry altogether. So for me, it was we've been coming from software background, uh, Agile and Scrum been implemented in software. The challenge was coming to a manufacturing industry. How do we go and do that? Luckily, I had some um, some experience. So the combined role, first challenge we found was the first challenge is that due to resource constraint, we were challenged to combine Scrum Master and Product Owner role. So we, there was one person. And whereas in traditional Scrum world or Agile world, we have very distinct two different roles. But this was the challenge. Second challenge was dependency. There were so many modules, so many projectors running using waterfall methodology. And this particular project, which we uh, were pilot, where we were piloting Scrum and Agile, uh, was feeding into uh, waterfall projects and matching its release dates with the other projects. Uh, that was a very, very important challenge. And then we felt it was challenging. At the same time, we had distributed and shared team. Uh, so they were distributed across UK and EU and at the same time resources like you know purchase, manufacturing, risk management, they were shared across various projects. So nobody was dedicated. There was no concept of dedicated project team. And uh, you, as you would know, if you're using Agile or Scrum, uh, we need a co-located dedicated team to succeed. Uh, so this was one of the biggest challenge we found that yeah, no one was 100% assigned to a project. Uh, and uh, they were sitting in different locations. Uh, so with these challenges, first thing I understand, we need to have some kind of strategy uh, to deliver this kind of a project, make those changes. But I, how many people have heard about Peter Drucker? Peter Drucker said this, the culture of the organization is strategy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, so basically, if you have a bad culture or if you have a traditional culture, it's very difficult. Even if you have a brilliant strategy, it'll never work if you have a culture. So 
the biggest challenge we saw was a cultural change, bringing this cultural change. Bosch, Worcester Bosch specifically being a traditional organization and been there for more than 30, 40 years, uh, it has its own culture and uh, we wanted to bring some changes to mindset uh, which was the biggest challenge. And obviously it comes with, a, as I said, the organization culture, it came with some kind of a, you know, constraints. So we had, it was very, very process driven. Any, like any other manufacturing industry, you have a lean six sigma, six sigma, where uh, you have a proven process and all those things are heavily um, process driven and the processes were very, very mature. Um, there was hierarchy, uh, management structure there, uh, which is any other organization, so there's nothing wrong. So I'm not criticizing that structure. The structure, most of the organization, we have a hierarchy. So we take permission from senior, senior takes permission from the senior directors and director take permission from CEO. So it's always this, uh, uh, though we call it empowered people, but we still have, have dependencies on senior management. Okay. At the same time, biggest constraint was Boost is currently market leader and they want to maintain that thing. And, and if you want to maintain the market leadership, you are very, very risk averse. You cannot take any risk of changing any existing process. This process is a proven process and you would never go and change those things. So it makes organization risk averse basically. And because of the existing project method, we had deeply embedded waterfall mindset. Uh, so people uh, wait for one activity to finish and then start second activity. This is, this is a very generic statement, uh, statement I'm saying, but most of the organization you'll see that thing, people wait for something to finish and then they start. So, and obviously because of that thing, we had to go and have the upfront requirement, uh, gathering, analyzing and designing everything you have to send. Then once everything has been approved, then only you will start doing your production of that uh, product or module. So this is, these are the kind of a constraint we had when we started this project. So what approach did we take? Okay, it was difficult, uh, a new, uh, altogether a new area where we were exploring and we were trying to do this thing. Uh, so we thought, okay, let's, let's define our approach, how we're going to do that thing. So we said, okay, let's take the small steps uh, let's plan, do and check. So this is a kind of a continuous improvement kind of a thing. So we wanted to do a small bit and then check whether it's working or not and give the feedback and act, adjust the way we're doing. Then second thing is let's change the mindset and the culture. So bring that cultural change. And obviously there were resistance because of that uh, changes happening. Third thing we thought about the training, uh, training of team and middle management because they were supposed to deliver this and they were supposed to support this. Uh, fourth thing was we needed some kind of a buying in from board members. We needed them to support us. We needed them to empower the team members and middle management team. So that was very important to have that one. So we planned that meeting. And then we finally decided that, yeah, instead of just training people, we need a consultation and coaching support throughout the life cycle of this project. Uh, so we agreed on this approach. So steps we took. First of all, we did a management rollout. We moved on to a acquiring a dedicated scrum room where people can collaborate and uh, co-locate. Then we started customizing on coaching and training program. Uh, we did a gap analysis. We understood the knowledge gap and uh, experience gap from various people. And this was a call to with a uh, new methodology, but there were few people already trained and they had experimented. So we kind of a, had a mix of experience there. Then we started actually uh, um, adapting to changes and then uh, implementing this agile and uh, scrum processes. Uh, and as we went along, uh, we optimized these processes. Um, we used planning poker and sprint planning, etc. Uh, and then we planned the whole release. Uh, and based on that thing, we started using a tool called Jira later on once we started maturing and uh, started feeling comfortable. 
and we continue to actually um, coaching support throughout the life cycle. So this, these are the steps we took uh, during the transformation. Uh, so, in normal traditional scrum team, we formed a scrum team. So we decided initially start decided that we are going to use scrum methodology. Um, this is your traditional team. Uh, this is how a traditional team looks like. You have a product owner, you have a scrum master, and then you have a development team. Uh, but here, scenario was different. We had a slightly different structure, but the, as I mentioned before, that there was a constraint on resources. So we decided to combine the role of product owner and scrum master, which is not ideal, which is not recommended, but we had to combine that. Uh, and that the scrum master, original scrum master became lead scrum master plus internal agile change agent. So this person was helping us to um, promote uh, across business and other departments so that uh, we are well supported. Then we had scrum team coming from various environment like design, manufacturing, purchase, uh, risk management team, quality, uh, quality teams, so the people coming from various department coming working on this. And then we had stakeholders who are going to consume either our module or our product or variant of a boiler. So we have slightly different structure, uh, not ideal, uh, not to the textbook, but uh, this was that is how we adopted to uh, the scenario there. We started with simple uh, estimation. So this this is a normal journey when people start sizing and how much work and all those things. And traditionally, you you define your task or work package in number of days and man hours and man days, uh, all this. So it was a very difficult initially to convince people to you know go to t-shirt sizing. So we started with the t-shirt sizing where the small, medium, large, and extra large kind of thing. Uh, people still struggle to understand how t-shirt sizing works. Why should we do this kind of thing? Why are we not estimating them in number of days or number of uh, hours? Uh, so we came up with a slightly a more clever, more related to a manufacturing kind of a world. We said, okay, let's have a, uh, two factors which we can use. Uh, one is a complexity and second is effort. So a task takes certain number, number of days effort wise and it's a very simple, effort, a sim simple task or a very complex task. And based on that, if it's a very uh, high effort but very low complexity then it's a number five which is a kind of a scooter uh, and uh, if it's a very high complexity and at the same time high um, effort was then we are building a lorry so it, people could then start relating to the you know, complexity and effort and what they were building so it became much easier actually and moment we went to uh, something like uh, building a ship or building a rocket then they knew it's a very large and they cannot fit into three to four weeks kind of a cycle. So it was a kind of indication for the team to uh, let's break it down, make it smaller and a smaller module or smaller um, part. Uh, so it was interesting uh, how we went from this journey to that journey and then we still translated that into a kind of a story points. Uh, and so it's, it was interesting how estimation evolved there. Uh, we started using so now the the biggest challenge was is in any traditional organization uh, Bosch is not an exception you need to start reporting your progress how your project is progressing is there a risk is there a, are you behind or you're ahead how much money and all those things so the standard progress reporting we were using jira uh, for maintaining the product backlog so jira helped us in actually uh, getting the burn down and that was a very interesting, quite a few people started taking interest in looking at the burn down chart because it made a very easy for them to translate or understand uh, what exactly happening with the team, how much they are achieving, how much they are not likely to finish in the sprint. So that was very interesting and uh, we updated it quite regularly so that people while picking, walk, walking past your team, they could see how they're progressing. A very good indicator. And at the same time, we, want, we started maintaining a kind of a uh, velocity chart just to demonstrate how much we can deliver and how much we're improving actually. So it demonstrated that improvement then when we started we were like 38 story points, but um, by the time we reached to sprint four, it was nearly 55 story points we were delivering. So that demonstrated improvement and you know understanding. 
I think there's some question. I'll just quickly stop and look at the question. Okay, DOS has just joined. Hi, DOS. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Okay, so this was a progress tracking. Then we came up with a, uh, this is another thing which was we were asking and then very difficult for other organization to organize this thing. It's a dedicated scrum room. And we were lucky enough to have a dedicated scrum room where we had our board and uh, displays and all those things, loads of whiteboard, projector and every facility. And uh, we had our cuddly toy as well and loads of food. Uh, so it was a very dedicated environment and the team started feeling that, you know, that they are working on a special mission. Uh, so that was very good uh, where we could collaborate with each other uh, away from noises, away from distraction. Uh, team could sit together and start working on this. Uh, I think in any change or transformation, uh, the biggest challenge is the management support. Uh, and there could be a number of reasons why management cannot support you or, or the way they support or the way they, they, they have the mindset. And so we had a very good management support uh, in this scenario when we were doing this uh, because uh, they bought into this idea of uh, doing this. So they started quickly adopting to change. They started supporting their uh, subordinates and staff, uh, allowing them to learn, allowing them to fail. And those kind of things started happening there very quickly. Uh, so we created a type of environment where the failure is acceptable. Uh, if you into a manufacturing industry, uh, the quality is, is the most important thing. And the failure is not acceptable and lean is dead against failing. And, uh, and whereas uh, with coming with a mindset and then implementing Agile and saying that, yeah, it's okay to fail was a bit of a challenge, but uh, Panasman supported that. Then we had a, we changed how team approach problem. So it's not uh, uh, not the tools used to solve them. So it's uh, is the approach uh, how they solve the problems there. Uh, so everyone communicated frequently, uh, internal, external, and uh, end users were there. Uh, various other departments were there. Senior managers coming to show and tell and supporting that internal feedback because it was very, very important. So we were getting those feedbacks uh, within two weeks or three weeks kind of cycle. Uh, and constant learning. So we were learning all the time. So it's not just the product. I've been producing this product since last 30 years. It was a new thing we were doing. We were taking a modular approach. And uh, so people were going and uh, you know researching and learning all the time. So that was very, very uh, important. And management allowed people to go and do this learning. So the benefits we we got uh, part of this implementation of Agile was first of all uh, the project became in a very very manageable chunk. Okay, so a smaller chunks instead of a big uh, long two years project becomes manageable. Then we started sharing information with various department and various people. So that was very very interesting that how we share information and then became very transparent. Collaboration that was fantastic. After three to four sprint, I got the feedback from the team that they are really enjoying working with each other. They have been emailing each other, but they have never seen those people, but they were working together in a single room and trying to deliver this one. So the collaboration increased dramatically. Uh, so this helped in building the close net team culture, joint ownership. Uh, so it wasn't R&D responsible or the quality responsible or manufacturing team responsible. It was joint responsibility and everybody was keen on delivering this project. So that was a very, then the priorities became very, very transparent, uh, very, very obvious to everyone. This is the most important thing and why it's, and why, why that is important. So priority was justified and uh, so that people could uh, do this thing and uh, made it transparent to everyone. This had been actually on a daily basis. Uh, we didn't meet on a daily basis, uh, so there was no daily stand-up. We, uh, we had this on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, because people were still traveling from long distance and coming to this one, and uh, not everyone had a regular feedback because the way the nature of uh, uh, manufacturing industry. 
but we had uh, since we were meeting regularly uh, we had a very early visibility of anything going to block our project or uh, progress so we could go and uh, proactively fix those problems uh, as i mentioned i showed the picture we had a dedicated scrum room where people can interact and collaborate with each other uh, this was something different happening so so far it was a project focus now we are focusing on product so the whole focus switched from project to product and it was this journey was amazing and suddenly we people started just thinking about pro, uh, product and that kind of helped us in reducing the overheads and the activities which may not be necessary uh, in order to deliver this product so the whole focus moved from project to pro, uh, product um so again similar to sprint focus versus project life cycle focus though we had the whole uh, road map and a good understanding of what needs to be delivered when but at the same time the team was focusing on next two, uh, two to four weeks kind of a uh, okay this is what the next target is let's let's sprint and achieve those targets so, so uh, the focus was very narrow and very kind of a uh, around the priorities of the product which we needed to deliver uh, when we started there were loads of uncertainties because there was a requirement we still forming and we still collecting requirements where the department have not given their requirements for this product and uh, um, in traditional world you will wait for this things to mature but we did not we uh, went and started building our product and then we started showing those products to various uh, stake, uh, stakeholders and uh, seeking feedback so that's uncertainty about you know the requirements not being there or or requirements not being stable um, we just came across by building that thing based on the what we knew that time and demonstrated that uh, so which made much easier actually for end user to get convinced or provide feedback instantly so this help this feedback helped us to uh, align the whole team align the whole product align the whole component uh, very quickly uh, and um, this helped us in actually continuously improve our process because there was a built-in retrospective so it's not like a traditional uh, lesson learned which was done in once in three months or six months time by the time you've already forgotten what went wrong and what was working for you this was a regular retrospective we made it very interactive very interesting every two to four weeks we will meet up and then try and improve what is working for us what is not working for us what can be improved and those kind of things so these are the benefits which we saw uh, in this whole project so with that uh, i'm just coming up to the question we uh, i had quite a few people asking questions uh, how can i implement uh, these are the problem now this method cannot work here and all those things so i tried to list few of the few of the frequently asked questions or doubts or the reason top reasons which uh, um, manufacturing companies when i spoke to quite a few people outside so one is our product is too complicated uh, to not to plan everything meticulously in advance okay so yeah okay fair enough uh, there's another excuse uh, not reason i'll call it excuse our quality expectations are too high to not to follow a documented or uh, unvarying plan um, so this is something which we said okay let's come up with a basic product backlog and start building some product whereas in traditional manufacturing they will say no we need to document everything and then you know have to have a proper plan then only we build because quality is important to us yeah answer to that is yeah there's a fundamental misunderstanding of agile principles agile never says that you do not document or do not plan things properly we always plan we always have a long term plan uh, and then we have a short term plan we don't do not go and elaborate the requirements which you are going to deliver in six months time or one year time because the requirement may change and that's why the, there's a fundamental misunderstanding so we all do all those things if, if it's complicated it makes more reason why you should do this thing because uh, once you have done iterative or incremental product then you can actually feel, get the feedback from customer and see whether you're going in the right direction or not if you do build the whole product and then go back and ask for uh, feedback is too expensive to go back and uh, rework on those product so that's kind of an answer to uh, your doubt another excuse another reason the people gave that 
we have already made large investment in fixed machinery and tooling. So we can't change our process, we can't change our product line, and we can't change, uh, introduce new variant. Fair enough. Um, then another excuse is our product design is too tightly coupled to uh, iterate modules without changing the entire design. Fair enough. Answer is again, the current impediments that can be addressed iteratively over time. So if you see there's a problem, then you can uh, address it uh, immediately and uh, move on. Similarly, our vendors are not agile. Uh, this was the biggest challenge even I had uh, with other organization where third party suppliers were, we were uh, relying on third party supplier to give us a product. And uh, the biggest excuse I hear is, oh no, my third party supplier is not agile enough to support my approach. Okay, how can I do that? Thing? Um, Another one we say is the key steps of manufacturing process requires a long lead time to fit and sprint. So the, it can't be done in three weeks or four weeks time. I completely understand because it needs to go for tooling, it needs to go through the whole project uh, purchase process, which takes three to six months. Uh, but fine, these are the key issues. It requires creative thinking to solve. So you need to think creatively. A very good example of same thing with the, the project uh, in this discussion was a uh, life cycle of purchase. So anytime you, anytime you wanted something, you need to approach project, uh, people will get approval, then go to purchase. Purchase will go through a whole market and try and some quotes and shortlist three suppliers. And then these three suppliers being evaluated and then one supplier. By the time you get the product, it's six months minimum, four to six months. And that was a long lead time. And we started actually working closely with the product uh, purchase department. So one representative, two representative rather, came to our team and they started working. So they could anticipate what is we going to procure uh, next one month or next sprint. They start processing early on and, uh, and uh, we managed to get uh, items ordered and uh, received immediately. So it didn't cause much of a problem with us. So all the reasons you can think you can't do this have already been solved. So there's no excuse not to follow Agile. Okay, so with that, I would say, this is an example of Tesla, uh, my, my dream car. And soon, hopefully, some one day I'll be buying this car. Uh, but the companies are starting to leverage Agile manufacturing to succeed in the market. Most of the organization, so, uh, Tesla is one good example, Volvo I have explained, aircraft, uh, the first car company started doing uh, Agile and Scrum was a Wikispeed, uh, US based company. Uh, maybe in future, uh, one of the webinar I can uh, cover the extreme manufacturing, uh, and which is used for uh, most of the manufacturing industry. Uh, and um, so on and so forth. So there are organizations in manufacturing. Uh, I think in the UK, Bosch may be the, the one of the first organization to adopt this. And uh, if anybody else from any manufacturing, I think it's a good idea to go and explore this uh, world and uh, it definitely you'll see a dramatic improvement in how you introduce new product to market. So biggest question is, is your competitor one of them who is doing Agile and you're not doing it? So it's time to uh, get moving and start implementing Agile because it's very, very important for you to adopt to change and respond to those changes. Uh, as I said, we, when we stop learning, we resort to processes and we lose agility. And that's what you don't want actually in this hyper competitive market. So with that, I'm open to any questions. Uh, so feel free to ask questions. Uh, if you want to use question tab, the bottom, use that or if you want to um, speak then please let me know. Raise your hand if you have a question. Everyone happy? I'll wait for a few more minutes.
Okay, I'm happy. Dos, thank you, Dos. Thanks, Mubarak. Yeah, okay, so next question, somebody is asking question, can Agile be used in construction company, uh, construction industry? Uh, answer is yes, any industry uh, where there's uncertainty, where uh, you know something is going to, it, Agile is suitable for where there's uncertainty and where there's a complexity or unknown um, area where you've never been and that is where when you want to take a small step and then go and explore. If you have a well-designed um, building structure, then definitely go ahead and do that. But uh, if you have a short of a, so very simple, uh, we were doing a kind of a team uh, team building uh, work in uh, at HSBC, yeah, recently in HSBC. And in HSBC, we did a Lego building for building a whole township. And we realized that the township, we cannot build the whole township. So, uh, we started doing with the basic amenities and bus stops and uh, hospitals and then we started building some small houses first and then thought okay let's have a modular houses and then let's build uh, a few more uh, houses when people population started coming in we started building more facilities like clubhouse boat house and etc etc so yes uh, in case of construction industry yes we, it can be done okay where do you all Okay, so Volvo is, okay, the next question, Martin. Um, yeah, Volvo is using for modular approach. So when we, uh, they have a, a variation of same model. So we have a, you know, six seater than nine seater and those kind of things. So they have uh, a kind of a flexible uh, unit and then fixed unit. So for example, the, uh, the front chassis and the uh, engine part is fixed kind of thing. And then the rest of the seats are flexible. So depending on what you, uh, wanted they just customize that thing and change the quickly change the production line and then they uh, assemble car differently uh, so that is how they've been using that uh, so it is called SPA uh, model where it's a modular approach they have taken and uh, they do agile uh, in that and especially for the software also uh, the software they use within the car has been same thing with the Tesla is a very good example Tesla uh, Tesla, all the software they're using for uh, driving this car, you know, driverless and then braking if there's obstacle, uh, auto parking and all those things. Um, so they are using uh, agile methodology, not only for software, for for building uh, their car. Uh, so if you search for jobs, agile jobs in Tesla, you can see a few job positions there. So that, that is the indication they're using, but they're very secretive. They do not want to tell, disclose. But uh, this was confirmed by uh, Jeff Sunderland um, in one of the talk. Um, so there's another question is for construction, perhaps you could use the collaborative planning approach as the baseline uh, for using Scrum like input to the sprint planning does. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, so for example, in construction, if you, mm, you go step by step where your electrical wiring happening and then you start building the walls and then plastering and all those can happen. Yes, the, again, it's a collaborative approach uh, to planning and you plan your product and plan how and when what can happen and you make the whole progress very transparent and visible to everyone so that people can see uh, what's happening and what is coming next. So yeah, that's com completely agree. Uh, thanks, thanks for prompting that. Uh, Martin, I agree, Martin, I agree, modular, uh, modular approach is not necessarily agile, but agile, one thing agile says is bringing agility and how you can actually connect one thing to another one and you can progress. So uh, uh, agile is much, much more is extreme manufacturing modular, but modular and this is kind of a combined achieves the agility for the market. So your organization will achieve the agility based on modular approach. So if you have a model, uh, modular approach, if you one of the module is ready and this module can be used by n number of variants, then that is agility. You can quickly build this new variation. So it does support that. I'm not saying this agile approach, but this is a, that brings overall agility in, uh, in the organization. 
So that is the reason which I uh, just mentioned that. Okay, so Zach is asking question, would you recommend combining Agile and Lean and Kanban? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. Kanban is anyway used in uh, most of the manufacturing organization. Uh, Lean is another one which which talks about reducing waste and then uh, making sure your, your product is streamlined. So I think the Agile does believe in picking up the best practices from each uh, method or concept. So you can pick up the lean concept from uh, lean manufacturing. Kanban is the just-in-time kind of approach, and we use all these three com combination uh, to achieve. So we are not saying that agile is silver bullet. We are saying that agile is a more, a much more a common sense, a, com a better approach than uh, any traditional way of doing that. Um, yeah. So this one. Uh, so, okay, DOS, yes, go ahead, why not? So, shall I unmute you? So, DOS suggesting that he wants to talk something about bit. So, if you have, uh, we have five, five more minutes, so I'll unmute DOS and then let's DOS take over. Uh, okay, I need to uh, make presenter. So, over to you, DOS. So, so can everybody hear me? Okay, good. Right. Okay. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you very much for uh, for the overview. I'm I'm sorry that I was late, uh, stuck in M6, uh, and enjoyed the traffic. Um, yes, uh, Krishna was talking about the, uh, um, an application of Scrum within hardware development within manufacturing, which is which is something that I was involved in along with Krishna, which is quite uh, interesting experience um, I think few few of you I think one of you asked a question about construction uh, agile in construction um, I mean if you're from the construction industry I'm, I'm, I'm sure you would be you'll be familiar with the collaborative planning approach uh, that quite a lot of construction companies use especially within Highways England um, <clears throat> and and any other associated organizations that are part of construction uh, Again, the collaborative planning could be pretty much combined along with the Scrum approach uh, to try and carry out um, uh, the, the mainstream activities. And there is a little bit of a trial, uh, I wouldn't say it's a trial, but a little bit of an implementation um, uh, test that is currently uh, going on uh, at the moment. One of my colleagues is currently working on that similar approach. Um, and again, um, the, there are other things that uh, Scrum uh, can be applied into. I mean, I'm currently using Scrum to manage um, um, a large uh, organization or a business transformation program, um, delivering solutions um, into, into the business, which is, again, it's a completely different, different thought process. Again, all of this started from when we started to use Agile in manufacturing. Let's say Scrum in manufacturing, um, and again, uh, others have explained about using um, combination of Kanban, Lean. Yeah, as Krishna said, they are all part of different sets of tools and techniques. Uh, of course, uh, they are all certainly be applicable, and the combination of it would always help. But the most important thing people every everybody should remember, and I'm sure everybody would agree that those processes are for us to get the work done. So it's not um, people for the process, but it's the process is for the people. So we have to customize it wherever it is necessary. Uh, when, when we did the, 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 the Scrum implementation within manufacturing, the question I was talking about, we have to make compromises. We have to make some customization to make it work for for the organization, which is which is absolutely fine. I mean, uh, there is no one purest approach that you need to take uh, to implement certain things. I have I have done quite a lot of customization uh, on Scrum to implement it uh, to use for a business transformation program. Uh, again, it's it's the elements, it's the it's the mechanics, it's the it's the approach that is quite important. Uh, to, um, 
not just whether whether we follow everything by textbook. So that's 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 really really the essence of it, and that's what something that I would like to uh, like to emphasize within the team. Uh, and again, uh, people who are already working on Scrum and Agile, they would they would know what sort of energy and dynamism that it provides to the team. Uh, and again, I have to say that has really amplified a business transformation program that I'm working on with, with the teams uh, who were extremely frustrated with the organization organization where they were and we're trying to transform that organization to, to elevate them to a position where they should be through a lot of streamlining, process streamlining, etc. And delivering some little in, uh, little outputs every every sprint make them make them really taste the success and it's quite a lot of accomplishment in in their um, in in their work and then they see things happening and they see the transformation happening and and I think that's a that's one of the key success factor for for any any transformation program to be successful I think. Scrum played a key role, and, and I'm, I'm really glad that I chose the Scrum approach to use to manage business transformation uh, program. Uh, and, and again, thanks to Krishna, because Krishna is the first one who, who, whom I have worked with um, in, in this particular uh, methodology. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of now uh, going along the lines of promoting and preaching Scrum to a lot of people. So, that's it for me. I mean, I'm not a Scrum consultant, by the way, uh, but I have adopted Scrum, and I'm, I'm a real, true follower of Scrum. Over to you, Krishna. I think you need to. Uh, how do I give the uh, change presenter? Okay. Yeah. We can't hear you yet. How do we make you? Do yeah, can you hear me? Oh yes, now yes. Okay, I'll I'll mute you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Ross. Uh, thanks for endorsing that, and uh, thanks for uh, providing the input. Uh, how you implementing it in other industry as well. So with that, I would like to thank everyone for uh, joining. Uh, I know it's a weekend and then you everyone is rushing to go back home. Uh, so with that, please, if you like this um, webinar, please like us, follow us. Uh, we also offer 10% discount voucher if you just send us an email and uh, with this link and we'll give you voucher. We do loads of courses based on Agile, Project Management, uh, Lean Six Sigma, Black Belt, uh, green belt, yellow belt, etc. So we have loads of courses also going on, and we also help people to actually transform their organization. Uh, so please do uh, let us know if you if we can help you in any way. So don't worry about the business. We are talking about just helping the community uh, to become more agile, and that's a, my main focus here uh, because Midland is a hub for manufacturing, and we want to bring this uh, uh, change uh, in the whole uh, Midland. So with that. Uh, once again, thanks a lot for uh, attending this and hope hope you'll hear uh, soon from me and uh, when we organize the next webinar and uh, hope to see you again. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend.